empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. September 28th. The go of unconditional identification. Jesus said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and come take up the cross and follow me. Mark 10 verse 21. The rich young ruler had the controlling passion to be perfect. When he saw Jesus Christ, he wanted to be like him. Our Lord never places anyone's personal holiness above everything else when he calls a disciple. Jesus' primary consideration is my absolute annihilation of my right to myself and my identification with him which means having a relationship with him in which there are no other relationships Luke 14:26 has nothing to do with salvation or sanctification but deals solely with unconditional identification with Jesus Christ. Very few of us truly know what is meant by the absolute goal of unconditional identification with and abandonment and surrender to Jesus. Then Jesus looking at him loved him Mark 10 verse 21 this look of Jesus will require breaking your heart away forever from allegiance to any other person or thing has Jesus ever looked in this way at you this look of Jesus transforms penetrates and captivates where you are soft and pliable with God is where the Lord has looked at you. If you are hard and vindictive, insisting on having your own way, and always certain that the other person is more likely to be in the wrong than you are, then there are whole areas of your nature that have never been transformed by his gaze. One thing you lack. From Jesus Christ's perspective, oneness with him with nothing between is the only good thing. Sell whatever you have. I must humble myself until I am merely a living person. I must essentially renounce possessions of all kinds. Not for salvation. For only one thing saves a person is that is absolute reliance in faith upon Jesus Christ. But to follow Jesus and come and follow me and the road is the way he went wow what a simple word the go of unconditional identification mark 10 Verse 21, Father, I thank you for wisdom over wounds, 
Lord, give me wisdom today to understand how to release my identity to you. Mark 10, 21 says this, Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. I want you to understand that Jesus knew the man. He knew he was a young ruler. And he felt genuine love for him because the man came and loved Jesus and wanted to follow Jesus. We're talking about becoming a disciple, being able to go with Jesus, being able to follow Jesus. Not just salvation, but being able to walk in step with him. Where you go, I go. And he said to him, there is still one thing you haven't done. Can you imagine Jesus telling you, everything about you is good. Everything about you is wonderful. But you still have one thing. That would break my heart. I don't know about you, but that would break my heart. If, the, if I had done everything possible and came there and he said, but you still have one more thing. It's like yesterday when I was talking about the fact that the man called out from the side of the road and said, I'll follow you. But Jesus looked at him and Jesus liked him. But he didn't have time to wait for the man, but. And here we have another man. And it says that Jesus genuinely loved him. And talking yesterday, we were talking about how Jesus knew what was in the man's heart that said, I'll come follow you from the side of the road, but I got to go home first. Now, this ruler says, I want to be your disciple. I want to be just like you. I'm sure Jesus smiled on him with loving and caring eyes, like he was loving with the children. He was a loving Savior. Loving, gentle, and kind. And he said, there is still one thing you haven't done. Finally, he told him, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Almost like a butt. But then come Follow me. The man was broken hearted and hung his head because he knew he couldn't give up the possession that he had. One more thing you need to do. Go and sell it every That's all you like. Disheartened, it said, by the saying of Jesus. He went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, I imagine they were sad, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. 
Now, God, Jesus is not saying here that the man could not have wealth. But he knew that particular man that he had something hanging on him that was almost impossible. He even told him what to do. He said, go and give it to the poor. You know, so many people nowadays, it's just, they don't want to give nothing to the poor. They're like, they should have made their own money. They have attitudes and walking with the Lord and don't want homeless people to come into your vicinity. Ship them off somewhere else in the name of the Lord. Now you know that wasn't God. But professing all the time, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And dogging people out. Excuse me if you don't understand what that word means. Mistreating people. God is looking at you. God knows our heart. He knows what we're doing in secret. He knows when we have a problem. We just simply need to go to God and don't pretend. Tell God how you feel about things. If you're feeling bad, tell him, I'm feeling bad. And tell the Lord why. Don't pretend with him. God wants you when you deal with him to be transparent. Come before him with nothing hidden. Because he knows it anyway. Be free and natural. Tell God how you feel. And God, believe it or not, will do the same with you. God will let you know what he feels about a thing. And give you many times a perspective that you've never seen before. Confessing the word of God over our lives is what saying what God's word says about that situation. Whether it is so in the physical or not, speak it as it is. So many people don't have the ability to speak things as they are. Be genuine. Be honest. Be open with the Lord. Let him know exactly how and what you're feeling. I'm sure the man could have come out, the young ruler, could have come out and said, but I don't know how to do that. But Jesus already knew he wouldn't even go that far. Luke 14, 26 has nothing to do with salvation or sanctification but what we're dealing with here deals solely with unconditional identifying yourself with Jesus Christ very few of us truly know what it means to go with total abandonment and surrender all to the Lord. He didn't say that he wouldn't have treasures. But he turned around and said, you will have treasures in heaven. He wasn't saying when you die, that's the only place you're going to have treasures. Because the word of God speaks life to us on a day-to-day -day basis. And gives us an opportunity when we serve him when we obey him when we obedient he blesses us with things and stuff that we want and stuff that we need and some stuff we don't need you can find that example even with job after job went through all of the changes that 
he went through with the devil. He was a rich man, but by the time he got to dealing with the devil and, and what, what he was trying to prove to God that Job would curse him and die, and Job refused. Job refused. Even when his wife said, you know, you need to just go on and curse God and die. Even when his friends came in and gave him all this crazy advice, told him a whole lot of stuff. You know, Job turned around and called them a name. He said, you guys are miserable comforters. Let me ask you a question. Are you a miserable comforter? Do you just say things off of the top of your head to try to make people be religious? Are you just speaking from the side of your mouth to lay condemnation on people? Because they were saying, surely, Job, you have sinned somewhere. Tell us what you did. And Job refused to sin. He refused to bow down and say, I've sinned. He said, I haven't done anything. In fact, he said, my children were partying all the time. And I was going up and offering sacrifices for my children just in case they might sin and make a mistake i was praying and covering my children when this thing came upon me i was praying and doing the will of god when some fire came from heaven and devoured all my sheep i was praying and trusting the lord when something a mighty wind came along and blew down the house i was praying and trusting god now these miserable comforters, and they were supposedly men of God, were giving him miserable things. And the wife that he had was a miserable woman. She wasn't encouraging him. She wasn't. It never said that she was praying along with him. He said he was going up, offering up offerings for the children. And the enemy was the one trying to prove to God that this man, this man, this man named Job, some of y'all call him Job. Look up Job in the Bible, J-O-B. It's a whole chapter that Job had decided he was going to serve the Lord. It's in the Old Testament. And that without condition, he was going to be obedient to God. And he was so wonderful that it got the attention of Satan who came before the other angels to God and challenged him. Challenged him to say, you're doing all this stuff. And God, he got the attention of God. Don't you know you could get the favor and attention of God by the things that you do? Some of you all don't know that you can pull in so close to God to where God puts favor on you. Most of you all just think about, oh, I want the favor of the Lord. And you're talking about, I want money. You're talking about, I want to be up in front of a crowd. You're talking about all these mischievous things that make you think that they are the favor of the Lord. But you can draw in closer. I believe it's in the book of Hosea. The Bible says, lay for yourselves waymarks. W-A-Y-M-A-R-K-S. Waymarks. Beacons or lights that can make God run after and catch up with you. These are the things that will make God so pleased that it want to become part and parcel of your life here on earth. Lay yourself way marked. It means you should do things that will make you find favor with God. Many do not know how to do that. It is only when you have been charged and charged and terribly charged from the pulpit from these miserable confidence that you give 
and do things you are supposed to do as a believer. Fast, pray, attending programs and all this other stuff. How long will that continue? What happens to you if there is a minister who does not have enough anointing to charge you? You're waiting to be charged. You're waiting to be entertained. Your house. To the house and to Israel. Your desire, which is zeal. Z-E-A-L. It's supposed to be calling God closer to you. Not calling you closer to a cabinet position. Because there's only so many of them in our church. Not calling you to be the leader or the pastor of the church. There can only be one pastor. There can be several assistants. What is your desire from the Lord? Is it calling God closer to you? Or calling you closer to the things that go on in your services? When you rise up. It's supposed to pull God to you. When you call on the Lord, every time you have an opportunity, when you lean into God, you provoke God to establish His headquarters in your life. I believe it's in Psalm where He talks about the established heart. Having your heart established in the Lord. What? Is your heart established on? We want God to draw in closer to us. Draw near, Lord. Draw near, Lord. Hallelujah. Do you want the Lord to draw near to you? I I want the Lord to draw near to me. My friends, my family, my co-worker, my loved ones, my acquaintances on this line, I challenge you today. Draw near. Draw close to the Lord. Let God establish your heart from the rising to the setting of the sun. God is watching us and Wanting to have a relation to with us. When that favor begins to roll out on us at the same time, the authority of the Lord will begin to come out of our mouth and begin to move things and push things out of the way that have no business being there. Complete abandonment to the Lord and surrender to Jesus. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't get up and go to work. I'm not saying you can't leave the house. That you got to sit there and read the Bible, read the Word. That's not what I'm saying. We have life ahead of us. We have family members. We have things to do that we are in order with the Lord. When God calls us on missions and Sending us different places. Don't you know that the Lord will make a way for you? He'll make a way for you. Because when he puts a word on your tongue, the path begins to open. The way mark where he wants that word to be shed abroad to the people. When he gives you a beacon of light to shine in darkness. God say, my word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Do you ever call that out? Lord, be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Don't even let me go down the wrong road, Father. Stay close to me, Lord. The word of God said, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. God tells us in so many places, he said, draw in close to me. Not standing back at a distance. Draw in close to me. 
that means that you don't have guilt. You're not walking around with sorrow and depression. You're drawing in to the Lord. Drawing in to the Lord. Let God make your heart soft and tender. Let Him give you favor. Let His eyes come down upon you so that you might humble yourself even more, even more, Lord, even more. Woo, Father, I thank you. I must humble myself until I am merely a living person. Essentially, like yesterday, renounce possessions of all kinds. Renounce things that are not of God. Renounce the hidden things of the heart. Let God fill you up in order to follow Jesus. And he says, and then come follow me. And the road is the way he went. So many times I say to you all, the children of God during the time of the book of Acts were known as the people of the way. What way are you following? Are you following? Woo, I felt the anointing go all through me. Are you following the way of the cross? Are you following the way of Jesus? He said, when you get yourself ready, get rid of that one last thing. He said, come on now and come on, get your cross and carry it. He didn't say he was going to carry it for you. He said, come on, get your cross and carry your cross. So many times we're trying to carry other folks' cross. And another time I'll share with you where my eldest son, I was working with him and people were bothering him and messing with him and I was getting angry. I had got him on my job. He was working there and there were some people that were just being devilish and evil and I was getting all angry and upset with them because they wouldn't just leave my son alone. All he wanted to do was go to work and you know how they have all these things on the job. I'm not going to even call out what they are, but you know what they are. Challenges coming after my son, left and right, lies and everything. It was bothering me, you know. And I remember going to sleep and I shared this testimony before. I remember going to sleep troubled about what they were doing on the job to my son. And I had come up with an ultimatum of what I want, I planned to do. I had my own little strategy and plan of what I was going to do, but it was fleshly, it was natural, it wasn't spiritual. I'm just confessing truth here. And my son Nathaniel was just singing and humming, going on all about his business, and I was the one that was disturbed. I, and I couldn't even really make him disturbed. He was going on doing what he had to do, teaching his Bible study, and hey, my. You know, and I was like looking at him thinking like, I know he's got to be upset about this. And, you know, God likes to talk to me at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why that's his favorite hour. You know, maybe that's my watch. If y'all know about the watch hours, you know, God wakes you up at a certain time. That should be your prayer time. Maybe that's your time or your hour to watch and pray. I know that's mine, but 3 o'clock in the morning he woke me up and... He gave me a vision without going through the whole vision. He gave me, he showed me the women down at the foot of the cross. And Mary was crying because they were about to crucify Jesus. And she was just saying, I saw all these women down around the cross. I didn't even know that scripture at the time that said that the women were down around the cross. And John. And oh my God. I could hear Mary crying. God, that's my son. He's innocent. What did he do? 
Why are you going to kill him? Because, see, they had already held court. They had already let Barabbas go. And they had Jesus up on the cross crucifying him. And Mary was up there because there was a limited time before the Passover. So they rushed and they put him out there. And I want you to know, she in this vision, she was just crying, saying, That's my son. He's innocent. He didn't do anything. And I could see him. I could see him. I was right there with her and I was saying, but that's my son. Why don't y'all leave him alone? Leave him, take him down off this cross. He doesn't deserve to be up there. And then I heard a voice from heaven come to me and say, don't cry, Mary. Don't cry, Mary. And then the Lord said, He must carry his own cross. God said you cannot carry Nathaniel's cross for him. That's the name of my son. And instantly I woke up and I knew God had spoken to me. He said my son was going to go through some things. Even to the point of death. And my son did pass away. And some people want to know, how did you make it? How are you going on with the Lord? Because God told me. God showed me. You cannot carry another person's cross for them. I don't care how you try. They must carry their own cross. Jesus says, come now, follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. I don't know who this is for today, but I'm sensing in my spirit so deep. Because as my son was dying, I was in the room with him, my daughter and I. So many things were flashing before my eyes. And God was telling me things, telling me things. I was seeing so many things as we stayed there for a month with him. The whole time he was there, it was unconscious, but God was dealing with me. And I'm sure he was dealing with my daughter. But when I think about it, he brought back that thing and he commanded me. He said, don't cry, Mary. He said, don't cry, Barbara. Don't cry. Stop crying. This is going to come to pass. There are some things in our life that are going to come to pass. And we're going to have to buckle up our hearts. And we're going to have to stand up straight. We're going to have to get our minds right. God didn't give me the out to go kill myself. God didn't give me an out to go sit around and be depressed for you. God didn't give me any more outs. I had already done that. I had already lost years behind one sister dying. Then years behind another sister-in-law dying. Then years behind another sister-in-law dying. In fact, some of my friends knew how brokenhearted they were. I remember the day when one of them, about two of them were huddled together and they laughed. They were my good friends and they're like, well, we don't think we want to be her sister anymore because her sisters are dying. And I told them later on, you guys have no idea how that pricked my heart. I mean, I love them and we laugh, but when I thought about it later on, I was like, Lord, my sisters are dying. My my girlfriends are scared to be my sister. Father, I thank you, though, that you teach us through these hard times how to get up, dust yourself off, and press on. For somebody on here today, 
Let these words be words of encouragement. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Lord, give me wisdom over all of my wounds. This is not a story time that I'm coming on here for. I'm praying. I've been standing before the Lord. Lord, give me a revelation for this daily word. You commanded me to do this daily word. I'm not a young girl anymore. He said, you got some wisdom, Barbara. And he gave me the name of the, this podcast. Wisdom over wounds. He said, empower me. Wow. W-O-W. And I saw it. And I wrote it down. Wisdom over wounds. If you are wounded today, receive the word of the Lord. I'm sharing with you what God gave me in my spirit. I'm not here to make you holler, laugh, shout, jump. My voice may sound cracked. I've been a little hoarse. I've talked a lot for the last couple of days. I'm not sick. I'm well. I'm not even tired. But I'm thankful today. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your people today who are brokenhearted. Who are on this line broken hearted. If you have a family member that's dying today. I'm sensing this in my spirit. Let God seal you. S-E-A-L. I've sat there. Several times with people dying. And God gave me peace. Peace. Peace to know that I had done all I could do to keep them here. And whoever's on this line with me today, I don't know who you are, but God is saying to you, you've done all that you could in the natural. And many times others have to do something as well. But this is what I'm hearing for you right now. Be free. Do not pick up the guilt that the enemy wants to give you right now. You are not guilty, says the Lord. You love with an abundance of love, says the Lord. I'm thinking about this scripture. Jesus was watching the young ruler walk away. And it said, he genuinely loved the young ruler. And whoever you are today, I'm I'm, I'm believing that's more than one person, but in particular, in particular, there's a countdown, says the Lord. And they're tired. But God says, I am not the author of death. My scripture tells you that the last enemy to be destroyed, the enemy of God, is death. I'm telling you today, don't go into blaming God. Keep your mind right. Gird up your heart. Be thankful and enjoy. Write down every note that you can about that person. Release them into the hands, the angels of the Lord. Lead them through repentance if you have it. And allow them to give thanks unto the Lord. For God is good. Wherever you are, I'm going to continue to pray and pray and pray that God show me, show me, show me the person that you sent this word to. If you want to give me a testimony, send me an emoji, emoticon, send me a little love or let me know you love me. I thank you. 
So many times we don't feel like we get all the love we deserve. I take some love from y'all. These podcasts are on most podcast channels now. If you can't find it, just keep looking. It's under Empower Me. Wow. W-O-W. God be with you today. I'm just going to quit because so much more is bubbling up in my spirit. Go with God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. His might. The goal of unconditional identification. Mark 10, 21. Jesus said to him, One thing you like, lack. Go your way. Sell whatever you have and give to the poor. And come, take up the cross and follow me. I love you today. God bless you. This is Sister Barbara. Bye.